Well, we're going to get started in just a minute, but before we do, um, we would all love to know where, um, who you, who's joining us this evening and where you're joining us from. So um, please feel free to let us know where you're joining us from in the chat. Um, and I'll go first. I'm joining you from San Diego, California. Awesome. Looks like a couple people from California, one from Tennessee, Seattle, Virginia. Amazing. All right, well, with that, it's time to get started. Welcome to tonight's program, a Gap Year 101 webinar. This is a recorded session that you will receive a link to after the event. However, if you're joining us now, you'll have the opportunity to pose questions to our fantastic Gap Year counselor at the end. Um, my name is Ashley Williams, and as the USA uh, Gap Year Fairs Outreach Coordinator, I want to extend a huge thank you for everyone uh, to everybody for spending your evening with us. A little bit about who is speaking to you. As an international education professional, I have witnessed the firsthand transformative power of Gap Year experiences. Having been a part of our past three annual Gap Year Fair Scholarship Winners Journeys, I had the honor of presenting each one of them with a giant $5,000 check. Last summer, I was fortunate enough to experience a gap year program myself by doing a site visit with Spanish Gap Year, where I immersed myself in Basque cooking and traditional pottery making. This experience only reinforced my belief in the immense value of experiential learning and the importance of taking time to explore the world around us. As somebody who has studied abroad during their college years, I can attest to the life-changing impact that these experiences can have on one's personal growth and professional growth. Before we get started, I just wanted to mention that um, this information session is brought as a part of USA Gap Year Fairs, which is powered by GoOverseas.com. GoOverseas is a community-centered resource for all different types of travel experiences. You can think of us like Yelp, but for meaningful travel programs. You can visit Go Overseas to read verified alumni reviews, find programs, browse articles and guides, and learn about scholarship opportunities, including the $5,000 Gap Year Scholarship that closed on March 15th. But we do this annually every year. If all of the Gap opportunities available to you out there make your head spin, we recommend that you start with our Gap Matcher. It's a customizable quiz that can help you find your top programs to consider based on your interests. Um, we will drop a link to this resource in the chat for you, as well as our 2024 Gap Year Guide for you to browse through um, more program options. Now, every year we um, at Go Overseas offer a Gap Year Tuition Scholarship this is a $5,000 scholarship that goes towards a provider's gap year program. We have so much fun awarding the winner every year. And speaking of awarding scholarships, we would like to take a few minutes to announce this year's six gap year scholarship winners, totaling over $18,500 in scholarship funds. This year, we had the pleasure of surprising Ash Stowell. Ash's essay impressed us as a student who cares deeply about the world around them. He's passionate about conservation and marine biology and is determined to make a difference in the world. And that's exactly what he plans to do during his gap semester. By immersing himself in one specific location, Ash hopes to learn more about how he can contribute to a better future for all of us. Ash is a shining example of somebody who is following his passions and planning to make the most out of his gap time. Ash has won um, the Go Overseas Grand Prize of $5,000 Gap Year Scholarship, along with in-kind mentorship from one of these five accredited Gap Year counselors, which he has yet to select. Additionally, Ash can select any of these programs to apply the tuition scholarship to. Now, we still have five additional scholarship winners to announce for dedicated scholarships to the following programs. There are $5,000 $5, scholarships to both Seamaster and Where There Be Dragons, 
a $1,500 scholarship for Pacific Discovery and EF language campuses, and a $500 gap year scholarship for Irish gap year. So now I'm very um, excited to announce our winner for semester. And the winner is Bethany Williams. Congratulations, Bethany. Our $5,000 gap year scholarship winner for Where There Be Dragons is Grace Strickland. Congratulations, Grace. Our $1,500 Pacific Discovery Scholarship winner is Emily Pearsall. Congratulations, Emily. Our $1,500 EF Language Campus Scholarship winner is Machiku Osisoma. Congratulations. And our $500 Gap Year Scholarship winner is for Irish Gap Year, Elena Camos. Congratulations. And congratulations to all of our scholarship winners this year. So now I'm very excited to welcome Jane Soroyan, our keynote speaker and gap year experts for tonight's event. Jane has over a decade of experience as a gap year counselor matching young adults to programs of their dreams. Jane will give you a thorough overview of the gap year option for about 20 to 25 minutes and then we should have about 10 to 15 minutes for Q&A at the end. Thanks again and enjoy. Thanks, Ashley. That was great to actually see you unveil the scholarships. And I think one of your recipients just put a heart in the, in the chat box who is actually here today. So congratulations. It's amazing that organizations like Go Overseas and programs like those listed and counselors like myself are really committed to um, taking um, students who would not typically have as much access to some of the gap year opportunities out there and really committing um, to supporting those exciting opportunities. So that that's amazing. And I've had the privilege of working, I think, with two scholarship recipients in the last two years, and it's been incredibly rewarding. Um, Ash, let's go ahead and move into the next slide. Um, welcome, everyone. This is the final gap year presentation of a, a two and a half month long season of uh, probably 50 total in person and virtual events all over the country. Um, I've been to many of the cities that I see some of our people who've logged in today um, this last few months. And um, it's, it's great. It's, it's such a brilliant time to be out there and out here talking about the gap year. And now for seniors in particular, it's time to take the next step. So I imagine tonight we probably have a collection of juniors and seniors, maybe even freshmen and sophomores. Um, the presentation's really geared for everybody. And I suspect many of the questions might be around timing and things like that that feel a bit more pressing for you seniors. And I'll just start by saying it's not too late um, and you're doing great <clears throat> by being here tonight. So just briefly, who am I and what business do I have talking about the gap year? Um, I'm Jane Saroyan. I'm the co-founder of J2 Guides. The other two in the J is my fabulous husband and co-founder, Jason. So Jane and Jason Saroyan, we founded uh, J2 Guides with the explicit focus of helping students, um, as you can see in our mission, explore their full potential through meaningful gap year experiences. Um, as Ashley said, I've been actually gap year advising for about 15 years, and I've been in a gap year space for 30. So I cut my chops, you can see in the far left of the slides, that was my own gap year. Um, right next to that, sitting on the bench with the, some leaning in students, I was starting to guide trips. So I spent my 20s and early 30s guiding students on wilderness and cultural programs all over the world, mostly in Africa and Asia. Um, and then I became the director of a national nonprofit that took 400 students overseas annually. And so at that point in my life and my professional career was really focusing on risk management, ethical program development, um, developing partnerships all over the world, hiring and training staff, et cetera. And so I kind of took all of those experiences as a gapper myself, as a trip leader, as an executive director and moving into a uh, gap year consulting which is really much like a college counselor, that's the best way to think about what I do, is matching students, really assessing your goals, your interests, your abilities, your hopes, your dreams, your fears, um, with vetted programs that I spend my time exploring all over the country and world and helping to get students matched with the experiences where they're gonna truly thrive. 
And so my 15 year history leading up to Gap Year Consulting, unbeknownst to me, um, really became the perfect platform because having lived through those experiences, having developed programs, having gone through risk management scenarios, like I really developed a really robust understanding of what it means to help you understand that this can be not just a viable, but a thriving situation for your young adult. Um, and I'm accredited. There are six accredited consultants in our country through the Gap Year Association. And um, Jason and I are two of the six accredited consultants. Um, and I've been speaking with the Gap Year Fairs for, I think, 12 years now. So it's great to be here. Um, moving on, that's enough about me. I wanted to move on to what we look at as a definition of a Gap Year because I think um, that we all come to the conversation with a slightly different set of ideas or understandings, assumptions based on things we've read or heard or witnessed in relatives or neighbors, etc. And um, it tends to start a, an avalanche of misinformation. So let's just drill it back to basics. Um, the Gap Year Association has recently published this definition of a gap year, an intentional period of time devoted to personal growth and exploration through experiential learning opportunities. I couldn't agree more. Um, the way I would say it, if I wasn't citing GYA or the Gap Year Association would look like an intentional period of time taken away from school or career in order to engage in meaningful experiences. That's my kind of go-to because it's not always, it really is intentional, as you can see, made it into both their definition and mind. Um, I think that's a really core philosophy when we talk about gap years. We're not stumbling across it accidentally. This isn't the kind of second or third or fourth choice on the list. This is something that students are really driving towards. And they might be driving towards it for any number of reasons. Academic burnout, um, not getting into colleges they hoped for, mental health reasons, physical health, um, a genuine curiosity to explore oneself in the world. Um, a time to pause and work and make money, a time to mature and grow. So there's no wrong reason, but the reason should be intentional. And that's why that is so important when we think about this, because again, families make some assumptions that a gap year must mean you don't know what you want in life, or you're not going to go to college, or you're not going to be dot, dot, dot. It's very fear-based. And I'm here to tell you that after 30 years and working with thousands of students, that what I see at the end of gap time, of intentional gap time, are the most impressive young adults who have achieved the goals that they intentionally set out to achieve, whether it was fluency in a language, whether it was an internship in a possible college or career path, whether it was a time of maturity and growth and confidence building, whether it's to develop a global perspective, whatever your specific goals are is what we wanna help you plan your gap year to be. And so um, I will just say that um, I was going to mention about that photo, but it's okay. We'll move on that the gap year is yours. Your definition is yours. So if you have spoken to someone or seen someone do an experience that doesn't resonate with you, that doesn't mean a gap year is not for you. As you can see from this definition, it doesn't say what you have to do. It doesn't say it has to be international. It doesn't say how much it's going to cost. It doesn't say how long it is or how old you are. I have families messaging me and my child is 22 and I think this could really serve them. Does it gap your work? It absolutely could. So there is no prescription of what your gap year will be as long as it's about what will help you further where it is you hope to be. And for most students, we really is a bridge year. We really are talking about mo most students who gap are going on to college or uh, some other focused end point. So we really also talk about this as a bridge year. It's not that we're forgoing everything else. It's just a wonderful next step for young adults to take stock, really discover who they are on their own and employ all the skills they are gonna gain from this time into those next environments that they choose. All right, Ashley, now let's pull me away from this slide. We gotta keep going, okay. Um, so a little bit more just around um, I could call it sort of myth busting, but I do really value addressing where I think people feel afraid. Um, and when I think about learning, when I think about the students I've worked with, when I think about my own family, um, what is it I want for my child in a learning environment? And I put the five words that kind of came to mind for me in the top. So community, 
peers, instructors, that there's learning, that they're engaged with it, there's real skills. And so I've also put below photographs, uh, images of what a college classroom and a gap year classroom could look like side by side. And in fact, I would argue that we can see how community instructors, learning skills and engagement are happening in both environments. Let's move forward to slide, Ash. But here's the thing that can change. So we still have those five big words that I, literally, they're not printed anywhere. You're not gonna find this anywhere if you Google it. This was me coming up with a slide. But look at the words I've put in below and the subtlety of how they shift. So yes, your child is gonna have a community, you know, and actually it's, I think it's essential that a high school grad is in community uh, following graduation. But whereas in a college classroom, I would argue they look a little bit more like classmates. We might use a word like peers in that experiential space of a gap year where you have professors um, in the front of a classroom. We're really looking at gap year instructors as more like mentors where classroom experience um, then folds into real world experience. On the right, those students are sitting in a small community um, in Tanzania getting a briefing. And I know this because I was guiding this group with Jason, that's who's standing there, um, doing an orientation, briefing them on culture, language, health and safety to prepare them for a three month gap experience in Tanzania real world. And again, moving right into academic learning in that classroom environment to experiential. I'm learning by doing. So many families will tell me, you know, my child is so intelligent, but if they're not interested in the class, they don't engage. I think that's probably true for all of us. And it's really hard not to feel engaged when you're out there in the world doing it, hearing the language, eating the foods, meeting with your friends, discussing it over a fire at night. I mean, I could come up with thousands of small examples that would evoke that sense of learning and engagement that we see happen for our students. And the last thing I wanna say about this slide, and I think this is one of the most important, particularly because academic burnout is the number one reason that students are reporting across our country of wanting to take a gap year. We are talking about moving our students out of a performance-based environment into one that celebrates process that we don't care about grades. Are you gonna be challenged? Are you gonna be intellectually stimulated? Is your mind gonna grow? Absolutely, but it's not gonna be graded or assessed outside of anything other than your willingness to engage the process. And I think that is what has kept me in this field for 30 years is watching students re fall in love again with learning, fall in love with the world, kind of fall in love with themselves. I know that might sound a little corny. I think on the heels of COVID, a lot of students are feeling still um, a little loss of passion, connection, a lot of stuff going on in the world that feels dark and heavy. And I think that a gap year really has the opportunity to, to rejuvenate us head to toe, top to bottom, inside and out. Um, and so that's my last comparison I'm going to do on this end. Thanks, Ash. So, okay, a little bit of kind of defining, myth busting, getting us all on the same page. So now what, Jane, what do we do? How do we begin this process? I want you to start with a blank slate. And I would encourage you to start with the three questions you see in front of you. And they're harder to read because I've put in probably two big and bold letters, um, the real sort of heart of it, but a blank piece might look like this. Lo and behold, same document. And the first question is, I was gonna take a gap year because. So at J2 Guides, we start with all students exploring their whys. Why a gap year? Frankly, why college? We would hope you go through this process no matter what you're looking at. Why trade school? Why community college? Why the military? What is your why? Um, we want um, you to explore this process for a few critical reasons. Um, and ultimately what we find is that by exploring your why, again, with no wrong answers, it's helping to set that intention. The intention that we saw in the definition of a gap year, the intention of why your parents might be looking to spend 20 or 30 or $70,000 for you to college. The intention's real important when we start looking at resources and growth, uh, personal growth. So you might be able to, and in fact, I would encourage you to try and see if you can write a few sentences about your why. Start with just phrases, academic burnout, want to get fluent in Spanish, want to develop an art portfolio, want an engineering internship, um, want to address my mental health. It can be really specific or it can be like 30,000 foot view. Either way, knowing your why is going to be uh, profound in setting that compass point for how we want to start planning your gap year. 
But also, and my guess is for you seniors, people are asking you now what you're doing and what they expect to hear is college. In a way, what they want to hear is college because we're really singular in that way in our country. And if college is not your path immediately, you might immediately feel defensive, insecure, a little isolated. Maybe you say gap year and they go, what? You're doing what? What is that? That's no fun. So I challenge you to be able to take those phrases that you were writing and come up with two sentences, three sentences. I want to take a gap year because I'm academically really burnt out. Um, I've gotten into my college of choice, but I'm just not quite sure what I'm going to make of it. And so I'd love a year to gain in maturity and gain some more life and world experience. That is like a conversation stopper right there, right? If you could come up with two sentences with phrases and a few I statements in there, you have now taken hold of the conversation in a way that I believe you will feel more empowered. And no one that cares about you can challenge that. Now you've shifted the, the kind of tenor of a conversation, whereas previously you felt defensive and hopefully now you feel really empowered. And so that is a really important reason to figure out your why. Enough on that. Let me move on. The next really fun part, step two. So your why is there. We're going to work on your why. That's your first step. Step two, once you can kind of define your why or whys, you might have multiple, my interests, skills, and goals are. This is the fun part. Some of those interests and skills may have come up in your why, but if your why was more of that kind of 30,000 foot view, now is the time to just, and that's not nearly enough space, so a full piece of paper. And this is the place where you brainstorm. You dream about everything you could do if money and time and et cetera are no object. It is really um, easy to start to rule things out without even beginning the process. We probably can't afford it. My parents won't say yes. I'm not sure I'm strong enough or smart enough or cool enough. There's a lot of really easy places that our mind sabotages us. Um, but as you probably know, um, every, every great experience kind of starts with a crazy wild idea. And then there's work and research that we put into it, but we're not gonna get anywhere if we don't start with just the best case scenario. So we will address the finances. You will have the conversation with your parents. We're gonna address the things that are kind of creeping in that are stealing the joy out of the process. But for now, this should be an uninhibited brainstorm. Write down every idea that comes to mind. How big or how small, I don't care. Is it an adjective, a noun, a verb? Is it in full sentences? It doesn't matter. This is a free write. And it's an incredibly important process for students to take on without parents hovering. Let your child run free and really explore all the ins and outs and things that make you feel happy. Um, that's your step two. That's your brainstorm. This brainstorm should go on a piece of paper. I'm a big fan of pen and paper, showing my age here a little bit, but analog on this one, because I want you to paste it like up by your closet or bathroom mirror. I want you to look at it every day when you walk by it and you're gonna add to it. It's like a living, breathing document. Because if you're a senior, you still have quite a few months before your gap year begins. If you're a junior or younger, you got a lot of time here. So you're going to add to it. You're going to circle things. You're like, well, I wrote Spanish three times. I think that must be a pretty core goal or area of interest. Or, um, you know, I wrote skiing, but that's just because I love it. It doesn't really matter if it happens. So I can maybe, maybe you start a rating system, a one through 10 on a scale of how important or stars or stickers. So make this a physical document, make it one that you are forced to look at every day and continue to engage with it. That is step two. Step three is where we start to want to uh, bring in the criteria, um, the, the pieces that we really do need to look boldly at. Now, as a start, my prompting phrase for you is, for my well-being, I need dot, dot, dot. So um, what I mean by that is, uh, Jason, I have a big philosophy that students hashtag, you know yourself best. And so um, we want you to really be honest with yourself, with your families, ultimately with programs about what you need to be successful. If there's a program that has a no cell phone policy for three months, and you're doing telehealth every other week, and that's really important to your mental health, then we know that we need to look at a program that's not tech free. We need to look at a program that's gonna support your mental health program, right? Um, if you know you are um, 
really happy, you're an athlete and you're happiest when you're able to work out, then we know that we want to consider programs where you're going to be able to maintain. If you're celiac and have certain dietary restrictions or preferences, we know we need to look at programs that can support that. So this is where we start to put in from that big, beautiful brainstorm, some of those parameters that are essential to your mental and physical health. And I would also say financial health. So this is where, as a family working together, it's such a great next step about talking about money, which we don't do a ton, or certainly in my era growing up, that wasn't happening. I do see that myself and my peers are having a really different relationship. We're really trying to educate our kids about money and um, and talking about what the budget is for the gap year. So that is where that some of those criteria will come in. So those are steps one, two, and three, and I'm gonna illustrate them. You're gonna see two more slides, same paperwork here, but I just, just to highlight and drill it in, um, some of my core points here. So let's go on, Ash. Thank you. So here it is. I want to take a gap year because remember, there are no wrong answers, okay, to why you want to take a gap year, and you may have a few. So those are the those reminders. The goal piece, number two, my interests, skills, and goals are, students, this is you. This is all you, exploring all of your hopes and ideas without limits. And then the last, the third piece, for my well-being, I need, be honest about what you need to succeed on your gap year. And let's see how this panned out for another student. And that will be the last slide of this series. Um, thank you, Ashley. So here you go. Um, I'm feeling burnt out and I'm not sure what I want to study in college. I would love to travel, gain more independence and have new experiences with people my age. That's profound, why? Um, and really hard to dispute, right? I can't imagine one person logged in tonight could take any issue hearing a, a poised young adult share that. Okay, good starting point. My interest, skills, and goals. We've got Spanish, environmental conservation, travel, volunteer, or woof. I can explain that later if no one knows what that means. In Australia, time at home to work. Great. For my well being, I need a group of like minded peers. I like cities, but I'm happiest outside. Access to Wi Fi for telehealth every two weeks. It's a short start. Um, but a really important way to illustrate how we want you to begin before just diving into the programs. If you have Googled gap year programs, you will get a million plus hits. So when you, that's so overwhelming, but you've got resources like consultants like myself, you've got go overseas. So you're immediately gonna start to create a more refined list and it will be even more successful if you take a little bit of time to do these three steps which are immediately gonna to help to apply those filters onto your search engines, right? Okay, Ash, let's keep going. So now what, what do we do with all of that? This is kind of step four. This is a tried and true J2 Guides um, strategy that we encourage our families to consider and families love this strategy. So I would encourage you to even screenshot if you're here with us live tonight, this is where it all comes together. The gap year progression is a concept um, not unlike learning any new skill, learning to read, learning to swim, learning to drive. How do we begin with these young learners? Do we start on the deep end? Do we start on the highway? We do not. We start with really um, understanding the basics of the skill set in a safe, and comfortable way with mentorship and instruction. And as a student starts to show some level of understanding and mastery of those basic skills, we make it harder. We raise the bar, we add more skills to it, more challenges, and students raise to that, and so on. And a gap year is no different in my mind. A lot of you in your brainstorm will probably put some pretty independent looking things. I want to go surfing off the coast of Spain. I wanna backpack around Europe. I wanna drive cross country in my car. And I love all of these ideas. And parents often don't right away. It sounds very scary. You're looking at your young adult thinking like, there's no way I can see how you might pull that off. That is terrifying. But if you think about this progression, what if your young adult began their gap year, look at that fall section with a more structured program, with peers, with leaders? What if they did a second experience in the winter? And I'm gonna backtrack in a bit, but just to see this through, and you do another experience with more mentorship, deep diving into an area of interest. In the spring, 
after maybe six months, five months, seven months of experiences out in the world with real mentorship, real challenges, real successes, your young adult is going to be actually quite well equipped to take on some of those independent experiences. And so the progression supports a model where we encourage you to think about front loading your year with more structure peers, leaders, the kinds of programs that you are seeing attend these gap year fairs. Um, and they can range from one to three months. They also tend to be a little bit more costly. So um, you see a bit more $2 signs on the far end, uh, top of the left side here. Um, but you're paying for a lot of scaffolding that is helping a young adult for the first time potentially be out there in the world, whether it's in the country or overseas, moving through these experiences, gaining skills, dealing with challenges, holding on to their own passport at customs or immigration for the first time without the parents. This is a huge rite of passage. These skill sets do not go away when the program goes away. These are now a part of the young adults and ones that we can continue to leverage in each subsequent experience, thereby making the spring a just brilliant time for those really independent aspirations that some young adults have. Now, look, some, some young adults will do very structured programs the whole year. Remember our definition 15 minutes ago? It's up to you. You know you best. The gap year that is going to most help your young adult thrive is the gap year for you. This is just a model. Take what you will, throw the rest out. But it's a really helpful way to consider how you might take a year and break it up which leads me to another comment. Many families are surprised to learn that you could do multiple things on a gap year. There's sort of an assumption we're doing one thing for the whole year. There are a handful of year long programs. They are fewer and fewer because students want variety. If one of the chief things we're hearing from young adults is they don't know what they might wanna do in school, then a little bit of variety in that gap year, not too much, we don't wanna dilute it, but a certain amount of variety could really help a young adult get experience in a wide range of experiences, giving them potentially more clarity about their college and career paths. Ashley, will you do me a favor and go back a slide? If we go back, let's focus on the interest, skills, and goals. So there are Spanish, some, some of these might overlap, right? A Spanish experience involved in environmental conservation, that could work. Travel volunteer, woofing in Australia. Okay, keep those in mind. Ashley, let's go back to that slide. So here I might really recommend that that Spanish happens in the fall semester. And there'd be a lot of opportunities to, um, and I actually know the program, that slide, that photo that I use, they are doing a marine biology and conservation program. So um, maybe we don't have the Spanish there. Maybe that happens separately. I don't know. But you take those goals from your brainstorm and you Remember I said it's up, it's up on your window or mirror for as long as it can be. And over time, maybe you're able to kind of see two or three or four things that really pop out at you. I would suggest that you try to build your year around those few core goals. At J2 Guides, we have called those your anchors. They're going to literally anchor your year. So your fall anchor, hopefully, is an experience that is structured with peers and also has one of your core interests, right? We always want to keep your interests paramount. So we can kind of tick that off the list. Okay, the winter, maybe that's the, either the environmental conservation, or maybe that's the scuba diving, or maybe that's the Spanish. So the winter is a great time to kind of plug in another goal that you were able to articulate on the page before. And then lastly, that student talked about like woofing in Australia. Woofing is an opportunity to do low cost work exchange. You can volunteer on an organic farm and in exchange you're housed and fed. A lot of students love to do woofing or similar low cost work exchange options. Um, and that again, as I've been saying, those slightly more independent, less facilitate experiences end up really serving everybody the best towards the end of the year. And the brilliant news is your budget has probably <laughs> shrunken quite a bit. And as you can see, towards the end of the year with this model, less structure means less costs. Um, and it turns out to be a great and brilliant strategy. Do not forget that being home to work and save money and contribute to your gap year is a brilliant part of the year, whether you do it in the summer, as this young adult did, or some students come home in the winter and work for a few months before embarking again. Okay, I'm giving you a lot here. One more slide here to illustrate the gap year progression and someone who went through the process. This is Zach. Um, I connected with Zach as recently as January. Um, Zach is now a junior at Duke. 
Um, he is a double major in environmental science and public policy. He took a gap year in 2020, 2021, the single hardest year in my entire career, watching and supporting gappers um, do this amazing thing during COVID. And Zach says, I feel like I finally found my people. It felt amazing to go through these incredible hands-on experiences with other like-minded peers. So Zach um, really liked the model that we proposed. Very little was happening internationally in the fall of 2020. Zach had done some climbing in an indoor gym. He really didn't have an outdoor bone in his body and his own words, but a big passion for environmental conservation. So we hooked him up with a wilderness program um, that has a big focus on environmental conservation in the U.S. Um, he had the time of his life, and I think it's worth saying he just had spring break. Um, and I actually happened to talk to his mother a few days ago. It's funny. And um, Zach is now guiding other Duke students on both pre-college programs as well as um, summer, uh, excuse me, spring break programs. So he found something he didn't even know he was passionate about in the process of pursuing something he was passionate about. So that's an input, another important marker is when you lean towards the programs that do look like they have a lot of what you want and maybe some of what you're not sure about, it could end up to be an incredible win. You never know what you'll fall in love with. Zach in this process became a trail runner. And when I talked to him in January, he will say that his gap year and the, the self um, care skills that he learned, including becoming a bit of a trail runner, is what he attributes him to be able to maintain a level of mental health and balance at Duke, which, as you can imagine, is a very high pressure academic scenario. Um, and he really attributes his wellness right now, not even his academic success, which is also very strong, his overall wellness, his social confidence to his gap year. So I think that's amazing. Things started shifting in 2021 and Zach, um, a passionate student of Spanish, but hadn't really learned it outside of a classroom. We got him to Costa Rica where he did another Spanish immersion and environmental internship. And I put this in because I know it's kind of fun and funny, but when students do the brainstorm, they often put in ideas that we worry as parents, this is crazy. This is, we're not going to pay you to go surfing. But again, it's, you can't really look at a student in a gap year like this and fault a young adult for going to surf for a few days in Costa Rica. His goals are clear. And I can tell you, having done this process with thousands of students, my students don't build gap years around surfing. They do on their own come up with core goals that parents fully embrace. And by nature of not limiting them and encouraging them not to limit themselves on that brainstorm, why not tick off some of those other bucket list items on your gap year? I think health and happiness are underrated in our community sometimes. And what a brilliant opportunity. So there was the surfing. And I said where he ended up. So Zach is thriving. Um, he probably would have done great going straight to college. I believe that most students will. Um, but I think he's um, a much more confident um, and balanced and um, compelling candidate from what the gap year gave him and what he made of it. So super proud of that young adult. That might be one of my last slides, Ashley. Let's see. Okay, so where do you go from here? I mean, we have our Q&A, which is really exciting. Um, I will mention um, that for anyone interested in the gap year but not quite sure, um, I really encourage you to talk to programs. So I'm going to kind of scatter all around here, but um, following programs on social media is brilliant. Go to Instagram, go to Facebook, TikTok, whatever your preferred platform is. Follow programs. They are giving away scholarships, including us. They are highlighting programs and students in the field, real-time stories, and it will help you feel connected. When we do these gap year fairs in person, we have hundreds of people in the audience, which is really empowering for families who up until this point often feel rather alone in the process. You might be the only one in your graduating class thinking about a gap year. So connecting with pro programs, even on social, is gonna help you feel connected to the community. And you're gonna see that there are other things being raffled and advertised and scholarships and real stories. So really valuable. The Gap Year Association, I mentioned them early on with my definition, um, a great place to go for both data um, data on the benefits of gap time and, and what the success we're seeing in the college uh, environment, as well as a list of accredited programs and consultants like myself. Um, 
Yeah. And let me pause there because I want to make sure we have sufficient time and maybe, yeah, there's all my contact information. Please reach out by email, follow us on social. Let me know your questions um, if we don't get them now, but I can see there's been stuff going on in the chat. I haven't opened it. Ashley, I'll, I'll let you kind of take it from here. And Thank you so much, Jane. Sure. Wonderful presentation. So now is a great time to throw any questions you might have in the chat. Um, and while our audience may be thinking of one, Jane, I have a question for you right off the cuff that I, a quick question I hear from time to time, which is what if my student doesn't want to go to college or if they feel like a year's um, not enough or a year is too long? How do we navigate those changes and make sure they're prepared and ready to start back up again? Thank you. So I just want to be clear. I understood the question. So what if my child does not want to go to college? Yes. Yeah. Um, well, I'm not a college advisor, to be clear. So that that is a really interesting one. The question I often get more is, you know, um, I think a gap year would be great for my child. How, I, how do I get them to kind of consider it? I think if your young adult doesn't want to go to college, I would per, I would go through some of those steps of the why, why not? And then what else would you do? I mean, we are hearing more and more students feel less inspired. Um, and I think it's from the academic burnout um, about the college prospect. So, you know, I think certainly not forcing the process is really important. I think students need to feel heard right now. Um, seeing if you can appeal to them with community college um, or gap year, I guess maybe it's like, well, okay, maybe not right now, let's have a plan, you know, sitting around the house and working at Starbucks isn't really a great long-term plan. So let's talk about it. Is it gap year? Is it community college? Um, maybe just see if you can get any area of interest. Um, again, I guess I would direct you slightly back to this, this idea of the why and also the brainstorm. I'm looking for students to articulate a, if I have a flicker of interest, you know, it's, it's a lot. What was the happiest your young adult has ever been? What class was their favorite? Who inspires them? Um, and usually what I find is um, if we find one interest, we can kind of tug on that thread. And generally I'm able to articulate five to 15 ideas on that. And I think students don't know what they don't know. And once they start hearing the possibilities, I see a lot of excitement start to bubble up. And that's really what we're looking for, right? Is we want them bought in and excited. I do think that a, a well-planned gap year that your child feels excited about could very likely direct them back to college. Um, and that's what most students say. They have spent time out there in the world engaging in things of interest. I talked about it already. They feel rejuvenated. They feel confident. They feel ready to actually look at college as a real option again. Um, I don't know if I'm answering your question. It's a big one. I appreciate you asking it. Um, and again, maybe take advantage of a free consultation with a gap year consultant. I think what we want is our students to be engaged in something that makes them happy that they've got investment in. So if it's not college, you want to find it somewhere else. Thank you. We have a question here from... Um... Our audience member, should you hold off on applying to colleges if you're taking a gap year? Oh my gosh, that's a million dollar question. Um, I'm going to guess this is a junior family or or younger. Um, not necessarily. It really depends on the student. So as you can see, I, I don't have one word answers. So I have a little bit I want to say about this. If you're if you your young adult knows they want a gap and you're on board as the parent and your student is motivated, I do think applying to college as a senior has its merits. Um, maybe don't apply to 20, maybe it's 10 or two, but I think um, the system is there to kind of escort you through the process. Um, and it's good to do that. And it is great to take a gap year and know that most of my students will apply during high school and then they will request a deferral. They will defer their admission for a year. So it's a little bit of having your cake and eating it too. You have you got your gap year and you don't have to worry about college. That is for someone who also is excited and ready to engage the college process. Um, if your young adult is not ready to engage the college process at all, um, and I definitely have a handful of families like this, there's been uh, just real academic burnout, mental health, family tragedy, any number of circumstances where the student's like, I am not applying to college this year and um, and a family is on board with that, then don't 
Trust that, but make sure you're working with your high school to understand the steps and pieces that will be required. And I have seen many students apply very successfully on their own during a gap year. So it really comes back to you and your young adult and what they're up for. Um, the best case scenario, I think, for peace of mind is to apply um, during the senior year and to request a deferral. And um, I can drop a link or maybe Ashley can, um, uh, a blog from our website about how to apply for a deferral. And it's really straightforward. And I would say the majority of colleges around the country are very pro gap year because they see how successful um, gap graduates are um, on the college campus. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. we'll send that resource in a follow-up email in one to two days. Great. Uh, second question here is, are study abroad programs done through colleges better, worse, or different than doing gap year programs? Oh my gosh, <clears throat> another amazing question. Such an intelligent group of people here because, um, or insightful. Um, yeah, I mean, I've had, study abroad's fantastic. And very likely a, a, someone who takes a gap year is also gonna be primed for a study abroad year. Here's the difference. Remember that slide where I talked about the college classroom versus the gap year classroom? and that last word on each of performance versus process. So the real difference, I mean, they are very similar. And I think any parent listening who did a study abroad experience, it was probably one of the more profound experiences of your life, um, full of wonderful memories. So you do know what we're looking at. The gap year, the difference is, it is for the most part removing that academic piece. And given that students are really expressing that academic burnout, that is a huge um, argument in favor of the gap year. That's really the short, you know, that's the most succinct way I can define it. But I mean, I think study abroad years are brilliant. And I don't know that we've ever studied the numbers, but my guess is nearly 90% of students who take gap years probably also take study abroad years because they understand that profound opportunity. So there will be fabulous learning and intellectual engagement on a gap year, but freed from a lot of that kind of academic pressure. And the other thing I will say is one of the things I just cherish about the gap year community is the people involved in these programs. They are, they are passionate educators, um, very um, emotionally intelligent people. So I would argue that a student on a gap year is going to get a heck of a lot more attention socially and emotionally than they'd ever find on a college campus. So for that family who is hoping for the level of mentorship or guidance um, as a student is gaining more independence and growth, um, no question, I think a gap year is far superior in that level of emotional support and guidance that is offered. Thank you, Jane. Um, we have time for one last question. Um, and somebody put in the chat, do any of your clients enlist in the military after the gap year? I have had families tell me they were going to apply, and um, but I have to say, um, I don't always hear from our GAP alums. I would imagine it's like probably for me, it's probably like 1% or less. It doesn't mean it's not happening. Um, maybe those people just don't see themselves as a fit for J2 guides or GAP years, et cetera. So I don't hear about it as much. But I would say like one in a hundred are telling me they are thinking about the military, but I never find out if that's what they end up pursuing. Thank you. Great question. Ashley, real quick, I was wondering if I might be able to, because I don't see that I can drop things to anyone but hosts and panelists. Oh, okay. Um, but if it doesn't pop up, I did want to put in that letter about how to defer. And if you could just copy and paste that, and make sure everyone gets that. I saw someone ask for it. Yeah, definitely. Thank you so much. Okay. Well, um, thank you everyone for those amazing questions. And thank you, Jane, for the amazing, wonderful, and insightful presentation. You're really making me want to take an experiential gap year now. Um, if anybody has any questions that they did not get to ask Jane, we will send her contact information along with uh, recording of this webinar um, for you to follow up. Thank you everyone for spending your evening with us and thank you, Jane. My pleasure. Good luck everyone, it's really exciting.